Hi, I'm Angela Birchall. Welcome to part two of Points to Ponder on Portraiture. And today we're looking at poses and possessions. Throughout history, artists have painted portraits of the nobility, the famous, the rich, whatever. And it's not just been what their faces look like. It's the whole manner of the pose that the person is portrayed in, but also the possessions that they have, the costumes that they're wearing, anything that adds to their status and the story about them. Artists such as, as Gainsborough and Reynolds would even include some of their family landscape of the, the baronial estate or when we started getting the up-and-coming merchant class they would have their family portraits with the landscape at the background of the actual estate where they lived on. Anything to reinforce the character, the, the status of the person portrayed. Now we can use this just as easily as, as Gainsborough or Reynolds used them. And just think who your character is what their, their background is, or their, their interests, or where they're from, anything that adds to the story. Now, take this one, the portrait of the professor. A big area of this picture is given over to the academic robes, but that says something about the character that's portrayed. And add into that the background, not highly detailed, but just enough to show you the myriad of books of learning and inspiration that's part and parcel of the professor's world. Now contrast that with a painting where you have no particular background and you have no particular reference in the clothing. It, it just has to rely on how accurate that portrait of the face would be. There's no clue in that as to what his background is, his occupation, anything really it's just nice colors in the background but it adds nothing to the actual portrait it doesn't tell the story we saw this one in part one of the points to ponder on portraiture and you've not only got the portrait but you've got that typical clothing of the the dark heavy coat with the turned up collar and the scarf and just that background hint of the dark buildings of the London streets and it adds not just to the idea of it being a portrait of Benedict Cumberbatch but Benedict playing Sherlock and you just use the, the colouring and everything just to create that effect so it just seems to bear in mind what adds to the the story that you're telling in your portrait. Is there a particular background scene, a setting, a location? Is there something in the clothing? Whatever it might be, just to add to the story behind the portrait. Anything to add another clue and another dimension to the actual painting. The next piece on Points to Ponder isn't restricted just to portraiture, it is a fundamental foundation to every realistic drawing or painting that you want to do, be it portraiture, figure drawing, life drawing, still life or landscapes. And that is proportions. How we measure things to keep it in proportion and relation to everything else that's around it. That's the way that it reads right to the viewer. So that will be the next points to ponder, so keep an eye open for it in the chat room. And remember, if you missed the first points to ponder on portraiture, it's available for you anytime in the You Can Draw and Paint chat room on Facebook. See you soon, have fun, keep it creative.